Ever wondered why Hagia Irene, the lesser-known cousin of Hagia Sophia, never gets the limelight she deserves? Now don't get me wrong, it's not that Hagia Irene isn't a knockout, it's just that living next to a world-famous supermodel like Hagia Sophia can be tough, especially when you're the Cinderella of Byzantine architecture. Imagine always being the second choice for tourist selfies, the backup plan for history buffs, the silver medal in the architectural Olympics of Istanbul. It's like being the John to Sophia's Marsha in the Brady Bunch of historical landmarks, but don't let that fool you. Hagia Irene has a story as rich and intriguing as her flashy sister. She's seen emperors rise and fall, survived the iconoclasm controversy, been an armory, a museum, and even a concert hall. So, buckle up folks. Well, let's dive into the life and times of Hagia Irene and see if we can't get her some overdue recognition. Back in the day, around 330 AD, Emperor Constantine I decided he needed another monumental building because why not? Picture this, Emperor Constantine I strutting around his empire when he suddenly realizes something important. He's missing a monumental building. Oh, the horror. So what does a man with power, influence, and a seemingly endless supply of architectural enthusiasm do? He does what any reasonable person would do. He embarks on a shopping spree. But not for shoes, clothes, or fancy chariots, no, no. Our man Constantine was all about those monumental buildings. And not just any building, he wanted a church, a grand one at that. Thus, Hagia Irene was conceived not out of necessity but out of, let's call it, an insatiable architectural appetite. Constantine's craving for monumental buildings was so intense that it could only be satiated by the creation of one of the most beautiful churches in history. And so Hagia Irene was born, all thanks to an emperor with a serious case of edifice complex. Now, if you thought your family had drama, wait till you hear about Hagia Irene's early Byzantine period. You know how in some soap operas there's always a villain trying to take down the hero? Well, let's just say that Hagia Irene had its fair share of villains during the Byzantine period. It was like the building version of a daytime drama, full of conflict and intrigue. Only instead of a stepmother with amnesia, it was emperors and patriarchs arguing over whether to decorate with religious images or not. Let's talk about the iconoclasm controversy, which was basically a two-part series. First, there was a ban on religious icons, then a reversal, then another ban, and finally, a never mind we like icons again moment. It was like watching a tennis match, only with less grunting and more theological debates. So after surviving the Byzantine version of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Hagia Irene was ready for her next adventure. Imagine going from being a church to an armory. Talk about a career change. Now we all have heard of job transitions but this one is for the history books. Picture this. One day you're a tranquil sanctuary, offering solace to the pious, and the next, you're a bustling armory, housing weapons of war. That's precisely what happened to our dear Hagia Irene. She swapped her peaceful hymns for the clanging of swords and the rumble of cannons. The once sacred space became a secular powerhouse, a strategic stronghold in the heart of Istanbul. This wasn't just a minor remodel, it was more like, goodbye sermons, hello siege engines. The transformation was as dramatic as swapping out a choir robe for a suit of armor. And let's not forget, amidst all this change, Hagia Irene maintained an air of dignity, a testament to her resilient spirit. And just like that, Hagia Irene traded in her holy water for gunpowder. What do you do when you're an old building with a lot of history? You become a museum, of course. And Hagia Irene, well, she took it a step further. She decided to become a military museum. Talk about a career change, right? Imagine walking into the serene space where once hymns echoed off the walls, and instead, you're greeted by rows of shiny swords and sturdy shields. The saints on the walls replaced by stories of brave soldiers and daring battles. It's like swapping out your yoga mat for a tank, a tad bit dramatic but, hey it's all part of the charm. And you know what they say right, the pen is mightier than the sword. But in Hagia Irene's case, she decided to house both, a holy house turned iron fortress, holding within its walls centuries of stories from prayers to warfare. From prayers to parades Hagia Irene sure knows how to keep things interesting. Everyone loves a good makeover story, and Hagia Irene is no exception. Picture this. Hagia Irene, sitting in the waiting room of a top-notch architectural plastic surgeon, flipping through glossy before and after pictures of the Colosseum and the Parthenon. Now we all know that beauty comes from within, but a few centuries of wear and tear can leave even the most divine building in need of a little touch-up. Over the years a few brave souls have tried their hand at restoring the old gal, some with a gentle touch, 
others with the subtlety of a wrecking ball. Think of it as a series of spa treatments, each one aiming to bring back her original glow, while keeping the signs of her rich historical life. After all, every crack and crevice tells a story. So after a few nips and tucks, Hagia Irene was ready to face the world again. Fast forward to the present day and Hagia Irene is still standing tall and proud. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal with this old pile of bricks? Well let me tell you, this isn't just any old pile of bricks, this is Hagia Irene, the grand dame of Byzantine architecture, a symbol of Istanbul's rich cultural heritage. Despite centuries of wear and tear, political upheavals, and a career change or two, she's still here, serving up lessons in resilience with a side of architectural brilliance. She's the kind of gal who's seen it all, done it all, and is still rocking that original look. She doesn't go around boasting about her achievements like her flashy cousin, Hagia Sophia. No, Irene's more of a low-key, behind-the-scenes kind of lady, but that doesn't mean she's any less important. So, here's to Hagia Irene, the unsung heroine of Byzantine architecture, who's been through it all and lived to tell the tale.